Hello, welcome to Star Wars Belt Out. I'm your host, Josh Chapman, and today I'm getting mocked on the video here. Uh, back in Australia, back from England, um, still a bit jet lagged, but um, had to get the episode out. I didn't end up doing uh, doing it last night, but I'll, I'll get into that in a second. Let's just bring out the guest who's, who's kindly jumped on to help us do this. The man, the man most talked about, the most the most talked about absentee at Star Wars Celebration. Buggy your Steel Saunders, as buggy your Sith Listers, buggy your bad motivators. The man that everybody... Buggy was, your whores. Buggy your, all your blue harvests. <laughs> Get coming up in conversation more than anybody else of why who wasn't at Celebration. Matt Mull, how's it going, buddy? I'm good, mate. I'm good. It's good to see you. I'm, uh... Yeah, I, I, I got the post-Celebration blues too, and I didn't even go. <laughs> I was having them while it was going, and I had them while it was after. And uh, oh, mate, like we we kept talking about you know because they, they were they're organizational snafus as there always are at these things. And your name came mm-hmm. up a lot of how all of this could have been exploited, basically. Well, funny story. Brittany Brown messaged me out of the blue, going, "Mole, I want to get into Kenobi panel. What are your tips?" And I was like, "I said, okay, here's what you do." There's a standby line and that starts here. And then there's the ticketed line that sort of goes here. What you need to do is right at the end of the sort of ticketed line and the and the, the standby line, it'll get really stressed towards the start of the panel and they'll just start flowing through. That's when you need to sort of come through the middle, like hide in the toilet or something and just walk through as if you were just coming back from there inside. And she tried it, but she didn't need to in the end. I think she got in just naturally. So yeah, I'm not sure if she got into that one. I have to, I have to check. There was, it was a bit weird because it was like the the, the I'm not going to too much logistics, but basically like the, the standby queue because the the hall was sort of divided into two halves. So they had like half the the exhibition hall on one half and half the exhibition hall on the other half. You kind of walked across. So like the celebration stage was on one side, and then the queuing hall was on the other. So they did have a point where it was like read it for everybody to walk over you had to basically like cross the floor to go over so there was a few Mm -hmm. moles there that who were like trying to time the run from when the people got ferried across the you know across the the walkway to basically across the drawbridge yeah across the drawbridge to get the thing but the staff were pretty much all over it there was a few kind of creeping up they're like i know you like over you know you know over there you can't come near this area as we walk across but i mean that was only one the one or two times i went to the main hall so I'm sure there are a few weak wow. points, like the Death Star. Matt, you would have found those weak points. My middle name is Proton Torpedo, so yes. <laughs> Matt, Proton Torpedo, Mull. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a mouthful on that one. But you were missed, definitely. We are, I mean, we had a wonderful time, but you were missed. Um, we'll do a proper recap. I mean, <laughs> you're welcome to sit in on the, re- the Celebration recap oh, I'd, episode. I'd, I'd love to. <laughs> Just be like, well, this is what I would have done differently. <laughs> Well, I mean, I love the um, the, the dailies, for, you know, especially I love that, you know, Jimmy was there and forced the boys basically in their bed, in their beds, just handing the mics, doing their daily recounts and you and Catherine and all the other guys daily recounts. I, I literally felt like I was there, but by not being there as well. So, uh, no, it was great. Yeah. The, the demand of content, there was a lot of like, got to get this out before I go to bed kind of stuff. But it was funny because I was saying... Like Anaheim, and you were at Anaheim. I felt like because there were so many late nights at Anaheim with Disney and everything, you were kind of running on this adrenaline the whole time. You know, like you'd have like you know four or five hours sleep and then just get up and keep going. Um, mm-hmm. The pubs kind of close at midnight in England, so in most cases you got a pretty decent night's sleep. But it did actually kind of make you more tired because you were more rested when you got. You know what I mean? Like you just weren't running on this crazy energy the whole time. You sort of managed to unwind, but then you had to kind of pick yourself mm. back up again and go again. But um, you know. We'll do the recap. No, they said that, they said you're the mayor of Hackney, you're just the master of curry. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I was the only one who had any kind of local knowledge, I think. So I think by default, that was just, you know, the case. And I just took everybody to the places that I used to go to. But it, 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 yeah, it worked pretty well. Um, so Mandalorian has wrapped up. The last episode has aired last night. Uh, I was lucky enough to go to the Disney screening that they put on at Hoyt's last night. So I got a ticket to that and um, I took my cousin Eli along and um, Sean Fallon from um, 
Blue Bantha Milk Co. was there and another mate of mine, another Sean, he came along as well. And uh, that was very cool. I saw Peter Hodgson and his brother Steve there as well. And then I ran into uh, Baz McAllister from Force Material, who I've been on his podcast Ooh. a couple of times, and vice versa. He was, I was just did a, I sent a photo, just like did, you know, tweeted a photo that I was in there, and he just replied, going, "Oh, where are you sitting? Like I'm in here." And um, the thing about Baz is that he lives in Queensland normally, so I'm going, "Are you?" At a Queensland screening, like, are they doing ones in every state and you've just got it mixed up? He's like, no, no, I'm literally in the Melbourne one. Um, so I went down sort of before it started and said day to him and he'd, <laughs> he'd won the competition. He got flown down by Disney and put up for the night oh, wow. to go to this screening. Yeah. What did he say to win? I don't know. I didn't ask, but he is a journalist, so he has got away with words. So It's 25 words or less. I put something like... Um... Oh, you know, watch the the Mando finale, and then my son was born the next day, and that's a flat out lie. And that could, I thought that'd get me in. <laughs> it did not. Well, didn't I didn't see you there. Well, I I, I didn't because he was like, oh, I got a thing saying I was a competition winner, blah blah blah, and I just entered. I don't think I got it because of the podcast. I just entered, but uh, yeah, it didn't like say you're a winner. It just said, oh, here's your ticket. So whether they were like, you know, there was a couple of winners that they were going to fly out, and then they basically just filled the room with local people like yeah so the way it worked was there was a thing for all disney plus subscribers it's being held in melbourne katie sackles will be there you know apply and and then there'll be 10 lucky out-of-state winners who'll be flown and and blah 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 um if you're not if you're not victorian so you you, you don't well to get through from the victorians yeah well i can't remember i thought you had some i thought you had some fancy hookup no, I don't think it was because of the podcast. Unless, unless that they like look at the names and they correspond and they go, "Well, his thing was okay," and we'll, you know, <laughs> we might get a little bit of like social media thing, or they'll mention on the podcast in addition. But uh, no, it was good. Like we, we, uh, you know, got popcorn and we got a drink and we got a black series bo- uh, Mandalorian, um, which was mm-hmm. the one you know the one that I sent you that was like twenty dollars on clearance. They both has got like ten million of these Boba. F- uh, it was the Mando with the the spider. So I've got the little spider <laughs> here. So I think there's a warehouse Ooh. of them somewhere in Australia that they can't clear. So I think they were just like, let's put them all on these on these um, you know. swag giveaway. Yeah, yeah, swag giveaway. It was good. We got like a Hugh, Le- Hugh Fleming, excuse me, poster as well, which was really good. Um, and it was cool. Yep. So we watched the episode seven first, and then they did a little like um, sort of intro in between. Paul, Paul Verhoeven was there doing sort of the emceeing, which was cool. And um, Katie Sackhoff was not there. She was supposed to be there, but um, she could not attend. I think she was supposed to be doing Supernova as well, um, and she wasn't there, but we got like a little video message where, you might not know this, mate, but according to Katie Sackhoff, Australia is the best Star Wars fans in the world. Really? Well, at least in that, you know, until the next one she records and it's just New Zealand is the best Star Wars fans in the world or, you know. <laughs> until she meets until she meets me and reconsiders. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, except for you, Matt. And you're like, wow, she knows my name. Um, so, yeah, I got to do that. Watched episode seven and then they rolled sort of into episode eight afterwards. And uh, it was good. Yeah, vibe was good in the room. Um, there are a fair few people in there who hadn't watched episode seven. So that was quite cool, including my cousin Eli. He hadn't watched it, and he was uh, he was very excited. Um, so it was a bit weird that I'd watched that episode at Celebration on the Galaxy stage oh, and two weeks earlier, yeah. two weeks earlier, and then watched it again in a cine- like in a cinema experience again, which was quite weird. Um, but it was a nice way to to watch the Mandalorian, and then we rolled into the finale, the thirty nine minutes of finale. Thirty-eight fifty-six, actually. Right now, you're usually a guy who's on top of this kind of stuff. So, when when did you see that that had broken early? That that was the running time. Uh, I I saw various places going thirty-eight minutes, thirty-nine minutes, and then someone was like thirty-eight fifty-six or something. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so I thought I thought there was a lot to pack in a short amount of time. Yeah, you know, forty-seven I think it, to fifty-one is a good run time. Well, I think the. Last last week's one, the episode seven one was yeah close to fifty odd, and I think that like the Doctor Pershing adventures in the city, well, city was actually the longest episode of the whole series, wasn't it? Was that 50, like, 57 or something. Yeah. yeah, it was almost an hour. Um, and there was mm. quite a lot of shoe leather in that episode, so to speak. Um, so yeah, I mean, let's get into it. I mean, do you want to just what was your initial feeling after you watched oh. it, mate? 
Well, let's just dial it back for you. So you saw episode seven. Yes. Who are the spies? Just, you know, the spies was the name of the episode. Yeah. We had that whole week of conjecture and, <laughs> and is it going to be the armor? Who's the traitor? Is it X woes? Is it, is, is it just the liar Kane? That's the only spy. Is it, is it, is it her and I'm, the droid? I'm yet to find the second. Is the, the is it the droid? Yeah, I know because it says the spies. Yeah, is that just complete misdirection for the for the next week? You think? I don't know. I I really don't know, and it's come up a lot. And I know people are just like, well, you shouldn't be disappointed that you, you know, you shouldn't be getting caught up in speculations. Like you literally said spies pearl and had one spy. Like you did dangle the carrot that there was a revelation coming. Yeah. Um. I mean, you could have just called that episode with Doctor Pershing the spy, and it probably would have been better. And you could have you could have called that other episode anything. Like that episode seven could have been called anything, but it could have just been like the Forge, or it could have, you know what I mean? Like it could have just been the Return. You, they, oh, they could, that one literally called could have been called the Return. This one could have been like the Reckoning, or the I don't know. Like some, it just seemed like a weird choice. Um, to dangle that and of course everybody you know if you're going to call it the spies and then you show one spy of course everybody's going to be thinking you know obviously they thought the armorer um you know i kind of thought maybe her him maybe her maybe axe wove since he sort of ducks out at the end you know i was kind of waiting for the for him to sort of for that revelation to sort of happen but nothing kind of went there somebody was saying that they thought they'd filmed a bunch of different endings and then maybe but maybe that was just a security thing but uh I don't know. Where was your money? Um, me and Frosty have always been a bit, bit nasty on the armourer. Um, and that, the, you know, the, it made the most sense and probably would have been the most interesting. Um, but I feel like they on purposely made it look like anyone was about to betray. Like there's certain um, conversational texts like... Um, from from Axe Woes and then the armor as well later in the episode. We'll go into it. But it, you, you look, it was like misdirection, like, oh, it, it looks like, it looks like, oh, no, it's not. And then, yeah. Yeah, it was kind of like misdirection with no payoff <laughs> in, in some respects. Or, I mean, there was a lot of playing it pretty safe in this episode, I think. Um, but we'll, we'll we'll get we'll get onto that. I mean, we kind of pick up where we left off last week. So they literally just sort of like leave poor old Paz Bisley dead on the floor, you know, with a couple of Praetorian guard things in his in his side, and uh, you know, it, it, no, nice try, mate, but didn't quite couldn't quite <laughs> finish the job, so to speak. But um, yeah, and then they kind of we, we sort of cut to them. They're kind of like running, you know, they're making their escape and stuff, and then they kind of like. They kind of run out, but then kind of hide when they get out. Don't, I'm just trying to remember, like, because they kind of come and go, like, "Oh, we'll be safe here for a minute." Yeah, this is the part where they're like, they said, because I watched it. I watched it really quickly on my phone at 4:52. The minute it came out, I had like literally You're like, 38, 38 minutes, minutes and 56 minutes seconds, or whatever it was, to get to. Da- well, I had to pick up my son at daycare at 5:30, and I sort of watched the first 25 minutes at home on my phone, and then. Um, 13 minutes sort of in the car, like on the thing, and then just, <laughs> oh and then five minutes outside the outside the daycare, and, and I was pushing it because I, I had to pause. I couldn't drive and watch, obviously. But, oh, well, um, I like to think so. <laughs> and and then I had to pretend like I'd been watching it for the first time at, later that later that night because my wife's like, why are you so relaxed? I don't you want to watch Mendo for now? I was like, oh, I'll watch it with you later. It's all good. Uh, um, you that. Now, surely she's caught on to you, caught on to that so far. Hmm. Well, until, I until you get, until you get really the, the points that. deducted on your license or whatever for watching your phone in your car or whatever like that, and you have to explain. Oh, massive, massive double demerits. Oh my god! <laughs> um, You're like, oh, three demerit points and seven hundred dollar fine for that. Ah. <laughs> I'll just 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 invoice you Disney. Don't worry. Um, should have flown me down. But yeah, no, like it's it's interesting because they're like, oh look, if if we can get out, I can show us a place where we like to hide, and I feel like they did that on purpose to show that sort of that garden area where Mandalore can regrow and start again. Mm. Like they literally just brought us out and then back in for that sole purpose to say, here's, here's the secret gardens that of B- Bandalore and Babylon that exist again. Yeah. Yeah. It was really shoehorned in saying life finds a way. Like- there was a bit of life finds a way. Yeah. So, I mean, they, they effectively escape 
and then go like, all right, well, we're going to regroup because we've got a ship full of Mandalorians in in orbit or whatever. So um, we're going to go get them to to uh, complete the fight. So they send old Axe Woves up there to basically tell them what to do because they, I mean, because they was you know they can't broadcast up there or whatever else. Um, and they're just like, all right, well, you know, everybody's going to get onto the little ships because the, the, they're going to come for the bomb, the big ship. Um, and then we sort of cut back to Din Djarin. I mean, they kind of, like, Din Din got captured and then kind of broke away pretty quick. And I kind of thought, well, that was a bit of a waste too. Like, I kind of thought there would have been some nice, I don't know, some nice sort of interrogation scene going or I kind of thought maybe there'd be a little bit of, like, I don't know, plan explaining going on. There'd be a chance to pull his helmet off, show Pedro. We didn't see Pedro Pascal's face at all. I kind of thought maybe they'd do something like that. Um, mm. He just kind of, I don't know. Like I thought the impact of him being captured prob- was going to play out a little bit more in there. This, this show definitely doesn't believe in the payoff. It, it sort of does big things and then it undoes them real quick. Yeah, um, there was a lot IG-11, of- IG-11, dead. Luke Skywalker, Grogu, back to Boba Fett. You know, like- you know, they, it pays off too fast, so you don't get it. You don't, but that is the thing. Like, it's a finale, you know. But I did notice that Axe Woves thing, and this is the way they were sort of trying to make it look like he was a betrayer. Like, yeah. as he's flying, I was like, I'm about, I can't hear you anymore, but I've got my orders. And I'm like, your orders? Like, wait yeah, a second. Yeah. And they actually, like, cut And then he was all shifty. The... Yeah, and they made a he's point of... He's all shifty of sh- on the thing thing. Made a point of showing him in the in the intro, like because because I couldn't skip the intro because I was in the cinema, you know. Normally I try to oh. skip the intro. Well, I know to skip the intro yeah. because then I don't because they just they telegraph everything of what's going to happen in the intro basically. Uh, so I was like, oh, all right. Well, they've made a point to say that he flew off, so maybe he's the one who's going to sell them out. And I'm like, all right. Well, that that's interesting at least. You know, that's something. But <laughs> he just got there and did his mission, so. But then, when the TIE Interceptors attacked, you saw, you know, the ship sort of being attacked, but you didn't see it being blown up. Like, they left it, and they sort of did that um, oh, that, that cinematic effect that George loves to use, where they the screen rolls over, and um, so it looked like, like oh, he's being under attack. Yeah, the wipes. And they didn't really... Um, I don't know. It left me, I was like, ooh, wait a second. Is he... Is he up to something? Is there, is there a reason they didn't finish the scene? Like, why are yeah. they leaving us hanging? I don't know. Like, is it is it worse to dangle it and have no payoff, or is it better just to try to trick you to think that there is something, but there's not? It kind of just, I don't know. Like, I, I, I mean, the armor I always thought was the obvious thing because basically all you know, Moff Gideon just got a whole bunch of Beskar, and all of a sudden he's made a whole bunch of stormtrooper armor. I was like, well, mm. is it? can anybody just use Beskar? I thought it was yet to be like a specialist to be able to do stuff with Beskar. Kind of felt like that would work quite well. Um, I think I had some tweet that like, you know, she'd turn up behind him and they'd start like kissing in front of Din Djarin or something like that. That was, you know, and, she, and you know, she had the horns on her helmet and he had the horns on his helmet and all this, all this yep. sort of stuff that kind of telegraphed that. And at the same time, it's like, is it is it a thing to telegraph something and then not pay it off or are we just, and then just do nothing <laughs> or... I don't know. I kind of felt like red, red herring. The red herring. Yeah, I know it's red herrings, but usually a red herring will trick you towards something that you weren't expecting. At least this was just sort of like tricking you into a thing where it was just like, oh well, I guess it's just going to play out pretty straight down the line. Um, Like even like when you know Din escapes from the storm. I'm just going to say stormtroopers, even though whatever they whatever the hell they are, dark trooper, whatever. and then Grogu turns up with the run-in at the end and basically uh, saves the day and gives him a hand. Like, I don't even know how he got out of, like, how he got there. Did he escape from out the back? Yeah. I don't even remember. Well, that's the thing. Like, he sort of just, one minute they're just leading into his debriefing or interrogation. He does a little little tuck and roll and all of a sudden it's the fight's on. And then... It was a bit James Bond. No like, just leave him with two, with two, two inept guards. A bit Austin Powers. But I'm going to say, like the way seeing him fight without weapons, it didn't seem as cool as normal. It seemed a bit janky and yeah, I don't a know. bit more of a scrap. But I mean, like yeah, and just the fact that he specifically was like, well, I'm going to no, Dinjar and 
I want him. You know, like I'm happy to shoot all these other Mandalorians, but I've gone out of my way to, like they they specifically target him, like capture him, tie him up, don't shoot him, take him to the mm. interrogation room, and there's just no payoff. It was like, well, don't you want to know why? He wants him specifically. He wants to interrogate him. What he wants to know, or what he wants, you know, what does he want to tell him, and blah blah blah. It just sort of felt like, ah, oh, well, let's let's at least pay that off. Let's get a nice, like Moff Gideon monologue, where he's like, you know, going to tell him his evil plan and and like do something with it. I, I did feel that Moff was very mo- mono- monologue this this time. He's just too busy <laughs> having. He, he probably watched Andor and is like, "Oh, if Luthan Rao can have a good one, I I can do it." But he doesn't have the same sort of writing material. He was very, very, very speechy. And, yeah, um, he was sort of you know chewing the scenery a little bit on there. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Did you get a lot of a New Hope vibes with you know R five and I saw, I remember seeing the meme and it's like Star Wars and it's like a book this long right yeah and then the next to it saying Star Wars if every single Imperial base doesn't can't be hacked by a R two R R five droid and it's like this long so <laughs> that's that's the first thing I thought of when I saw that because you know of course R five is going to deactivate everything and. Get 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 the cheat. I didn't even know he was there. Like, where was he? Did he come? Down I know him? he just he just flew from behind the, the rocks. He goes, but was he there all along? Went, did he come down with them? What? Because they came down. When did they come down? Well, they were all together on the ship. Hang on, they all came down to do the scouting been the, mission. He, so he wouldn't. Why would he? Yeah. They wouldn't have been with them on the scouting mission. Would he? He, he was in the in in the the um the Nubian whatever N one. But did he fly it down and and? To help him, like did I Jin, think so? Jin didn't fly down in the in the end one. He was like in the dropship with him. Because there's a shot. Because I, I was because that... I was watching it last night when they all drop. You know when they they're coming down, they all drop down, and he they, they had this shot where it kind of pans across all of them, and Din's sort of standing there at the end. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> the, the, the litany of a couple of other of weird consistency. <laughs> of, of I don't know. Like it kind of felt like they were leading up to this moment of of like we said, Moff Gideon monologuing to Din Djarin. And I was kind of like, okay, well, they're going to talk about what the troopers are. They're going to talk about maybe he's cloned them from something. Um, they're going to take Mando's helmet off and all this kind of stuff will happen, but none of, none of that kind of happened. And then they were just like, all right, well, we've got to go. Because he was just like, he, he fought the troopers and then was like, all right, well, we, we've got to go get Moff Gideon in order to like finish this. We've got to get him. And so it's like, well, you already had a premise where you could have had them in the room together. And, or at least had them in the same area, and you kind of didn't do that. Um, and then you had this weird well, uh, kind of dance around. Well, to be fair, like, you know, Moff had them all trapped, and then they sort of broke away and got reinforced. So, you know, he diverted from the plan. So he's like, okay, I'm going to wipe out all the Mandalorians forever. And then, forever. You know, <laughs> and then just he, you know, he just nicked off as soon as the fighting started, got safe. And so I guess he got distracted and then, I don't know, it was all very messy. It was all, but yeah, it was, it, it was messy. Uh, <laughs> messy is definitely a way to call it. Um, I mean, it was good viewing. I, like, I think the, this, act, this like, I think it was, the action was top notch. I think, I think Rick Femiua is the, M, the secret MVP of this show now. I think he directs the best episodes. He's done the last two. I don't know if he did, maybe he did the first one. I have to go back and check, but like but the, the he, direction he, he and the action has been two. really good. But I think he's just working; he's working with whatever he's got, basically, um, which is, you know, a little bit, <laughs> a bit tricky. And maybe there's been some weird editing going on and stuff like that. But as far as like the you know, the action and stuff was cool. So yeah, they Din basically is like, all right, well, I got to hunt down Moff Gideon. Um, I've got to go through his little red doors. And I need R five to open the doors for me. And there was a, you know, it was quite cute. He, you know, R five came in, and the thing with the mouse droid was quite funny. Um, and there was quite, there was quite a nice moment where he was like, you know, kid, you know, are you with me with this? We're gonna, you're gonna do this together. It, it just felt like the Grogu Din relationship has not been expanded upon at all in this. Like, it, I, it, like I, I kind of feel like you could have, you could have actually had a quite a a good thing where the, even the relationship was kind of not strained, but like the fact that he came back and 
you know, like you could have paid it off a little bit better that maybe the, you know, he wasn't quite sure whether Grogu should come back or not and, you know, and been really sure about, now we're together, let's do this sort of thing. I don't know. Yeah, look, and that's the thing, the fact that it was two years that they just dropped in the day before the premiere, you know. Well, also, like I know we're jumping to the end here, that they made a whole point of like, you're a Mandalorian, now this is where you belong. You know, you've left your Jedi training, but we need your Jedi training to basically get us out of this mess again at the end. Like, it basically fell upon the thing that he consciously got him to reject in order to sort of progress the story again. So, basically, it was the Jedi using the Force that saved his ass again. Um, but also, it's not to spoil it a little bit, it's the, it's the same thing he did in Season 1 finale as well, with the fire. Yeah. Same move. It's like, oh, exact same move. It's like, oh. I mean, I loved it. I loved, you know, the emotion, the moment, the force. You know, I, I actually got real Kane and Jarrus vibes with the fire. I was like, oh, don't. Don't you kill Grogu in fire in some sort of sacrifice. And then and then I was like, oh, wait a second. I've seen this se- exact scene before where he sort of holds the fire and then lets it go. If, like, you'd, if you'd oh. kept them apart, if you'd kept them apart this season... And he trained with Luke this season and he paid off at the end and he turned up. Instead of Luke Skywalker turning up to save the day, Grogu turns up to save the day. That would have been a more satisfying payoff. Um, mm. Because Grogu really didn't do much this season. And again, like they're, they're slowly drifting into that dangerous... You know, it's like Luke Skywalker in The Force Awakens' Last Jedi. It's like if you've got a character who's pa- too powerful, like what do you do? Like you can't... Yeah, they've kind of negated that originally because he's like a little kid and stuff. And then they kind of went, all right, well, we need him to move around. So we'll put him in the IG suit. Um, and he loses the IG suit. And then he's just kind of fallen back on, okay, you're going to be doing um, force powers again. Well, he's always doing force powers. I mean, he, it's not like he had to abandon the force. He's just not expanding on his previous learnings. Yeah, I just thought there you know, was a real... Self-defense is with the Force. Um, I just sort of felt there was a real trick that they missed it. Like, what happens if you take a you know a youngling? And because all this danger about, like, you know, attachments and what can happen. And there could have been some really interesting stuff about, like, you've taken an untrained, powerful being away and he's got attachments and how does he react to that and what happens and does he become dangerous and, you know, do the Mandalorians become suspicious of him? Like, there, was a lot of, there was a lot of potential that they kind of left on the table that they could have expanded into this that they kind of just left behind um i don't know mm. i don't know i mean like the the thing opening the doors was cool and finding the guards was was cool sort of you know as he sort of progressively picked up more weapons as he went um but yeah what was boca tan going doing while this was going on oh she went so they, back they, they rallied they went, the troops didn't she well she they went they they went to set to get safe and then, you know, obviously, then after a while, like just over the radio, the armor comes in, says Bo-Katan, and you think, "Oh dear." Yeah. And then it's paid off. No, no spy. Your reinforcements have arrived. So, um, and that sort of then put them back into the fight, and then they all, all of a sudden start joining. Well, the fight between Moff Gideon and 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 Din sort of convolutes into. Bo-Katan and, you know, yeah. the so Praetorians you've got, come out. Yeah, so you just got, like, um, Moff Gideon in the super suit, like he's Jeff Bridges in Iron Man or something like that, you know, sort of, like, smashing walls and, and doing all this sort of stuff. And it seemed like it was a bit robotic. I could kind of hear the robotic stuff going on. Oh, we didn't touch on that. They go through the... Even when they go through, like, the cloning chamber stuff and it's just cloned Moff Gideons as well, even that seemed kind of stupid. I'm just like, of all the things he could have cloned... <laughs> Mm, yeah, I know. Well, he's cleaning himself, and he did, he did allude that, and that, that's the thing in the previous episode that he's sort of, you know, Jedi, Mandalorians. Um, what else was it? Jedi, Mandalorians, and the Force, sort of like they all have their uses, and he's sort of taking the best of each species to build something that will bring order to the galaxy. And it's mm. just a, a bunch of Force sensitive um, Moff Gideons. Moff Gideons. Yeah, like is that, but. Is that how you kill him off without killing him off? Well, that's the thing. Is 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 he dead? Well, I mean, I'd have to go back and watch the game tape. You do the slow motion replay. 
I mean, he looked like he was getting a little bit fried at the end, but I mean, I mean, he was in that Beskar suit. Who, who the hell knows? And I mean, Din and Bo-Katan were what? What? Oh, I don't know. It seemed like that they needed the force bubble to stay safe, and there was a lot of fire. So maybe, but. but- uh, well, know. he's 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 been captured before, and I'm just you know I remember when they in that Doctor Pershing episode at the end when they found his cruiser and there was Beskar in the let Beskar remnants in the Lambda shuttle that mm. looks like they've been saved by Mandalorians. They never really touched on that. Is that did he just leave Beskar behind no, to his troopers, frame them? Remember they're wearing Beskar, so I assume it was just his troopers who picked him up. Okay. Fair yeah, enough. No, no, that's no. what I thought that was because his his new troopers are wearing Beskar, so it's just them doing it. Like I just assumed that's what that was. Um, okay, I can live with that. But that com- that implies that he basically had them already. But th- that's weird though because when they picked him up, because he gets you know when Luke Skywalker turns up, he kills all the robot dark troopers, and then he's mm. apparently incarcerated for all that time. So were these other troopers ready to go, and they just? were waiting for him to get captured or like, why did he just use them to start with? But anyway, well, it, it might've been the shadow council. Who knows? Like- who knows? Someone's, someone's rolled him out of prison, but it feels like that this is very off the books operation that he's done here. That he's basically, cause he was the one who they surrendered Mandalore to, or at least, you know, he was the one who bombed the planet. So I assume the first order of business he did was basically set up shop there. Um, hmm. But yeah, I don't know. Mess. Messy. It, it's, me- yeah, it's it's bloody it's bloody messy, and it feels like it's it- messy. It's 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 messy when you deep dive and go into it, you know, scene by scene. But when you're watching it, I'm just like, oh, this is you know, it was awesome. Yeah, viewing. I was like- great to watch in the cinema, and I was running running with it. But I was just waiting for the, I was waiting for the depth and the revelations and and where to go next. And and I mean, like we, we sat here and we wrapped when we wrapped season two. Um. I feel like maybe you were on some of these or maybe the last time you were on the podcast. And I was just kind of like, no one really cares about Mandalore <laughs> that much. And I think that's ultimately the, the, the this, I mean, this season, I mean, I I think that this is wrapped now, this story, hopefully. I mean, obviously that- we'll check in with Mandalore along the way, but I think hopefully we move on from this. And it did really feel like a, a bit of a reset, obviously where it ends up. Um, I don't know if you watch Rick and Morty, but there's just like, you know, there's a whole running gag. It's just like, oh, we're back to classic Rick and Morty adventures, Morty. You and me in the adventure having fun, you know, 10 more seasons. Classic Rick and Morty, you know, going around on hijinks. <laughs> and I feel like that's kind of where they've gone. Like, hey, all right, we're back to classic Grogu and, and Din and doing bounties, having a good old time, getting wacky in the galaxy. Well, it's definitely the way that it, it, it's been left now. Like, You have the ability to just sort of, we've done this season, it's... We've 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 laid down the foundations for canon Mandalorian law, and you know the planet's inhabitable. The people are back. You know, let's and, and now you know, and not to jump ahead too much, but she's like, okay, you've adopted him. It's time for you to leave and go have adventures. That's that's the rules. Oh my god, gotta have you, adventures. That moment where that moment where. We'll jump. Who cares? Everyone's seen it. Who's listening to this? You know, they get to the end and they're basically doing the ceremony. They're in the forge and stuff like that, and they're you know baptizing whatever you want to call it, the kids and things. And you know, they they said you know Grogu has to do the creed and blah blah blah. And she's like, oh well, you know, his parents. He's too little to say the creed. His parents have to blah 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 blah. You you know, his parents are here. I literally was like, are you seriously telling me we're going to spend next season looking for his parents? Like we've already got spend a season looking for Jedi. Are we? Is that what we're really? Are we really (laughs) going back to him just? going to planet and going, I'm looking for, you know, creatures of blah, blah, blah. I'm like, holy shit, are we really, is this, are we this devote, <laughs> are we this devoid of ideas? <laughs> this is where we've ended up. But fortunately, he's just like, oh no, I'll just adopt him, which I assumed it already happened. That, I know. I was like, come on, it's, it's, it's his space dad. And um, that was a good scene. I liked that in the end. Like, it was nice and Jin Grogu. That's pretty cool. Um, so does that mean, but Din, I thought it was funny. Din, ja- so does that mean Jaren's his first name? I don't know. Who knows? Maybe, maybe <laughs> Din Djarin's his name, but now that he's he's taken someone on, he's he's Grogu takes his name. I don't know. You, you never know. But possibly, yeah, Din might have been his father. Uh, I'll, I'll give you one thing: the the scene where they're flying and and she ignited the dark saber and they're all like following her. That was really cool. Mm, I, that was I cool. That. I mean, yeah. I, again, I feel like it was a lot of like 
Filoni sketching stuff in a book. He's like, and I've got this picture of Din- of Bo-Katan flying through, and she lights the dark saber, and you know, that lights the, the, the nice little key art. And let's just work towards that piece of key art. Um, so mm. we should just double back around. So basically, they Bo-Katan and, and uh, Moff Gideon get into it, and um, he crushes the dark saber, which is quite interesting. You know, nice to take that little MacGuffin off the table, and. Um, but ultimately, Axe Woves has got the ship, and he's basically he's just flying it into the into a very specific spot into the forge, um, which I'm assuming must be pretty big. I don't know. I don't know. Was that ever an instruction to fly it into the planet? But anyway, well, no, no, because because the the plan was use the capital ship as a decoy. It's yeah, not now flying into the <laughs> into the. I thought it was no, more- no, 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 no. But be, but because because he was the only one piloting it, and it's been deactivate it it's it's falling into the atmosphere he's gone okay i'm going to take out the base and yeah, he doesn't yeah, have yeah. to like captain captain america's take go down with the ship sort of thing no he can break he the window just, and fly well, out <laughs> exactly i was like oh my god is he gonna suicide i, like, I don't think so i had to pretend maybe but you know he's got a jetpack he can probably just fly out the window you know mandalorians yeah. do that and so um it yeah, might have been more i mean even 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 a little bit like you could have easily killed him off and it would have been slightly more, a little bit more weight. You know what I mean? Like you could have literally just had him like go to shoot the rocket and his rocket doesn't work. And he's just like, okay, well, for Mandalore. You know what I mean? Like he would have been a disposable enough character to have a a, a, a hero's death and, you know, given a little bit more weight to, the, to, to what happened. But everybody kind of made it out all right. It was only sort of nameless Mandalorians who ate it. Um, Moff Gideon probably is dead who the hell knows and like a hundred of those sort of anonymous troopers uh that they that they kind of killed off as well so they do that they basically dark saber gets wrecked poker tan and moff gideon kind of going at it but ultimately the, the ship crashes into the into the base big explosion grogu uses the force again to put a little protection bubble in for poker tan and for for din Djarin. and um yeah, and he does basically, and we didn't sort of mention he'd been using the Force before to help Din fight the Praetorian Guard stuff, which was a nice touch, but at the same time, like, what are you, mate? Are you, you you're still a Jedi? Like, you still should be a Jedi. <laughs> you, well, you, you don't just abandon, been. you don't just abandon Force powers. Like, if, if you've got what He literally what he's chose got. to abandon his Force training. Like, he literally no, he walked chose, away. He, he walked away from Luke's training because of his his attachment to Din, which is a good thing because, you know, I, that's the thing. The problem with the Jedi is that they think any attachment will corrupt you into making bad decisions and, and lead towards the dark side. Except for Luke, um, who basically used his attachment to save his dad and yet for some reason basically went back to, to, to the old ways, which is probably why exactly. he, which is, which is why he failed. That's why you're a failure, Luke, and you deserve to die. Um, <laughs> into the bin, oh, into like, the bin you go. Yeah, let's see if Ray gets it right next time around. Um, so yeah, and they, they you know, the, the day is saved. They um, and then we basically get this sort of like little cut at the end of on. They've all sort of set up shop on Mandalore. They've got the flags out. They've got the forge relit. Mandalore looks like it's kind of back in business. Um. We get, we get some good Mandalorian sort of harker going. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> going to be looking at all the. Oh, cos- no, no, is this? Is this? All the cosplayers are going to be doing that. I saw so many bloody Mandalorian cosplayers at celebration. They'll all be doing that next time. Um, the uh, yeah, and it was always a bit just kind of like, well, the planet wasn't in that bad a shape anyway. Everybody kind of just seemed weird that it took so long for them to go back and have a crack at that planet. But anyway, I guess they just kind of needed some people to get their mm. stuff together. So, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Mandalore's obviously back in play. I mean, they didn't, I mean, they, they hinted at the Mythosaur at the end and sort of showed it. I, you know, I said earlier along that the Mythosaur would have made, played a bigger role. I'm actually surprised that they held their, their powder on that. Um, I kind of thought it would burst out through the bottom or something. And I kind of thought, well, if you've got a big cave down the bottom somewhere and you've got a big fight going, it seemed like a perfect time for a Mythosaur to bust out of the ground and eat. Moff Gideon or something like that, but didn't happen. I know they sort of say that, and they're like, you know, they sort of foreshadow that this is for for Grogu to, uh, you know, take up the. Uh, they're connected now, basically. The, the the 
when Grogu sort of did his little force thing in the water, that's sort of the, the mythosaur took notice. They're definitely saying that's something that wait, save, see you in season four. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, let's just hope they 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 a little bit more work in the writers' room next season. This this season, I mean, we'll do we'll do the full season recap. I won't get too much in this season, but we'll get into that soon. Um, but uh, yeah, so basically, Grogu, they're kind of like, all right, well, you know, he's a uh, Din Djarin spent all this time to get to be a Mandalorian again and unite, help unite the people and get the planet back and do all this stuff. And then he's just like, I'm just going to get out of here and just do bounties again. Mm. I, like I've literally got the home planet back. I got everything I wanted, and I'm, this is too real. I'm gonna I'm gonna go hang out somewhere else. Get back to my day job. <laughs> well, I agree. Like me and Frosty have, have been texting furiously about this like the last twenty four hours. I'll give you some <laughs> some just, insights into the inner inner thoughts of Matt Frost. Yeah, he literally this messaged me fa- just before we started recording, actually, and I'll, I've got to get back to him. But um, yeah, I've got to get him back on the pod soon. We've got to do Pepper as well soon. But on an unrelated note, but this th- this tweet is his favorite one. It is crazy that we're expected to treat these Mandalorian scripts like deliberate normal television and not the hasty scribblings of a man clearly at some sort of spa resort. <laughs> and Frosty adds, with a bong. <laughs> yeah, I and think then- um, uh, <laughs> Maggie from Collider wrote a really good review um, and, you know, copped a little bit of heat, of course. And I, 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 how dare... I mean, I, I, I think it's ridiculous that there's like, how dare you criticize the mandalorian which is ridiculous really because it's you know we before this started when we started doing these reviews and even when we were doing the andor ones we we're just like where does star wars go from here how do you compare you know is it fair to compare the mandalorian to andor because andor is so amazingly written and everything like that and yes and no but even if you just compare it to the mandalorian and what's come before this was a, a bloody mess for the most part um some really great moments, but some just some weird decisioning and stuff like that. And I, I, you know, making stuff is hard. I get all of that. Like, and people pour their heart into it. But this is a solid three star series for me. Um, probably not much more than that. Um, yeah, I know. It's definitely it definitely lost a bit of its. It, it seemed a bit rudderless and all over the shop, and you know. It, very book of boba fetty as well like you know that, but I, that, I think that... going back to book of boba fett actually was a lot more focused like i know it did it, it veered and went to those grogu mandalorian episodes but as far as the boba fett story at least it had like a premise and a, a goal and and a, a payoff and it was reasonably consistent um yeah, I don't want to go too much on the series stuff because we'll, we'll do we'll do a full breakdown when we get the full the full team back together. But um, ultimately, Bando goes back to Navarro. Um, Grief Karga gives him a little bit of land and says, "Here you go, have a cabin in the whatever, and you can." Oh, he, yeah, before that, he goes to the um, the New Republic base, doesn't he? And, and and basically hooks up with him and says, "Hey, I'm looking for work." I'll, I'll do some selective independent contracting. Like I'll hunt for Thrawn and and I'll, I'll choose who I hunt for on your behalf secretly. Yeah. So c- covert James Bond Mandalorian style missions. I mean, I like as a premise, I quite like that. Um, but I guess at the same time, we don't really seem to. Um, we don't seem to be deviating too much from where we started but I, yeah okay like adventures together um i can't, I, if, if, I don't know it kind of i did feel like a, a wrap up wrap up like even the way it kind of ended with the little like sort of like the circle going on grogu and the music and stuff and it's like well you could have ended it ended the series there like if they hadn't already said it was a season four you could have been like yep this feels somewhat of a satisfying ending i guess somewhat open-ended I, I still feel like last season was the perfect way to end it but yeah i agree do you think it's time for fresh eyes on the project because it seems like oh. you know don't get me wrong john and dave love your work we've it's been a wild ride but just let some other like you, they've obviously let the other directors into the room but maybe but john's still writing everything john and dave are writing everything do you think just get some other people in on the scripts or get some absolutely like without a doubt like i think 
it, it, it's in danger of the, the show's in danger. Like it, 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 it's in danger of not going past next season. Next season, if we get another season next season like this one, which is all over the shop mm. and wildly inconsistent, it might be time just to to to, to let it die or, or, or wrap it up. Um, especially in the face of something like Andor. I mean, we haven't seen season two of Andor, but I can't imagine that there's going to be a massive drop off of quality in that. Um, I haven't seen the, obviously I haven't seen the acolyte yet, but I saw the footage and, you know, it seems really cool. I mean, it's impossible to go off the, of, of just footage and things, but um, I don't know. It's in danger of being a thing that sort of will be spoken about like, well, it started really great and kind of just tailed off and kind of limped along at the end. Um, but again, at the same time, it's, it, the premise is still really solid. If they can find the right story and tighten it up, it could soar again quite easily because the best bits are still great. Mm, like, 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 I'm listening to Lindo and Ken and and, and um, Brittany. You know, they, they you know, problem people are stop starting to stop care about the mm. storyline because there's no there's no thick plot to chase or the payoffs are too weak. So, well, because the core mate, of the show it, is, was the relationship between the two of them, um, and they resolved that. You know, it was the the man fighting against his traditions and having to break the traditions because he brings a bit of love into his heart and changes his perspective on things. So he becomes a changed man. And then effectively all they did was undo all of that this season and put him back into the man he was when he started. Like he's literally back in the armor. He's back in the cult. He's back in the same job. Um, He's got Grogu there, which I guess is good, but even Grogu's growth and abilities and stuff aren't really being utilized as well but uh, you again i'm no i'm not a professional writer professional writers can do this better they i'm sure if you i'm sure there's a million people who are involved in this project that they could put in a room and say all right how do we crack this nut how do we get this back on top and they could come up with a bunch of great ideas and 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 do it and i think however this ahsoka thing shakes out i know you're and again i didn't i mean I know I make a lot of fun of you, Matt, but shit, they yes. should have put a Thrawn sting in there or something. I don't know. They, they sort of they they could have they couldn't have said his name enough in the last episode. Uh, I think they're holding their powder on that, and I, I sort of could tell that they weren't going to show him last episode or this episode based on the reaction. You know, if 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 he was shown secretly in episode seven, the noise. I'm I'm very happy that there was no spoilers for episode seven because it was good, even though it came out a week early. Mm. None of us got none of us muggles who weren't at celebration <laughs> got spoiled. But yeah, I mean there was so much you know forecasting. Is he going to show up this season? Um, I don't know. I, I feel like people need to sort of absorb the trailer and get to. There's a lot of research for these people to do, you know. For the Ahsoka show, people need to watch Tales of the Jedi, a few Clone Wars episodes, Rebels, like, and the same for Thrawn as well. They need to read the books or just just get some of the general idea. Otherwise, they're going to come in and go, "Oh, this is this is a bar. I'm, I'm I'm too far behind." Yeah, but I, I haven't watched. They alluded like they went to all the trouble to allude of a larger threat in the galaxy of the Shadow Council and all this this bigger picture stuff that basically, and then they positioned Moff Gideon as back and he was the antagonist for the last two episodes so then once you've removed that antagonist what you've got left is the bigger picture so again that's why it kind of felt like if you didn't know that there was another season then fine but if you're trying to say that all right well now that the mandalore stuff's been resolved din jaren is getting involved with the new republic and you know officially or unofficially there's a bigger galaxy at play there's a bigger story We've we finished this bit, but hold on to your butts, everybody. We're getting ready for a bigger, you know, a bigger thing. But I, we'll, we'll, you know, I, I, I don't know. Like it just, I mean, they could have even just done something like Grogu was playing with that frog at the end, at the very end. Like, what if he just like snapped the frog's neck or something? Like he, he went a little dark side. He did something unexpected. There's a little bit of a sting, a little bit of like, oh shit! Like it's not all. That, you know, everything seems happy, huh? but there's actually some complications that we can look forward to. Like, I don't know. Like, I just... Mm. We a little bit more meat on the bone. It yeah, just played no, it definitely. so... It played it so safe. Safe. Um, it's very safe. And it's very tickety-boo. It just... Yeah. 
Um, Wrapped up in a bow, a big and I Mandalorian guess, did bow. The, uh, did the other ones as well? I, I, yeah, I don't know. I still, I'm like, I'm glad that they make more of it, but at the same time, if they just if they just ended it <laughs> when the Luke Skywalker one, or just I don't know. It's, it, it, yeah. I mean, it was a fun finale. It was entertaining, but I don't know whether it was particularly satisfying. But it was, it was a perfect finale for this season because it was endemic of the whole season. So mm. it it messy. kind of wrapped up, yeah, and it was messy and sort of a little bit all over the shop, and ultimately didn't take too many risks. And they just didn't really, really and they, all all these things that we spent so much time with, like like the Doctor Pershing episodes, and even like. Like the one with the robots and Jack Black, where it was sort of suggested that, you know, there's still people loyal to the separatists, and there was still these other stuff like that didn't really play into it too much, or kind of just alluded to it, and spent a lot of shoe leather on things that ultimately didn't really pay off. <laughs> and I, it was like last season we had too many cameos, so we'll just drop fuckloads of pointless Easter eggs this year. Um. <laughs> yeah frosty just texted me there's a tweet john favreau has says he's already written the mandalorian season four and he's written whilst taking a fairly long shit <laughs> wow god i maybe we'll get you two on the podcast together i might invite matt onto the the, the mandalorian wrap up if he's free just to you know bring, bring the old cynic in there and like you know i, I saw the warning signs in that first episode and I was kind of a bit like, you know, and when we did the first episode review and like even Catherine was a bit like, oh God, I think I sounded like a bit of a negative Nelly on that. Um, but the signs were kind of there in the first one that they were kind of, they were a little bit short on ideas. And um, I think ultimately we kind of ended up that way. But anyway, you know what? Who knows? Like who, how long is it going to be to the next one now? Two, it'll be good, at least two years. No, no, it's not. It's... um slated for filming in october so not far off filming already um so we'll probably get it december next year okay so two years well, 16 <laughs> months yeah. 18 months who knows what's the thing like that i don't know i don't know it was i mean i liked it i enjoyed it but it, it didn't have that gravitas that season two did like every sort of episode in season two you were just dying for the next one Whereas this one, I could sort of just wait for the week to come around. And even in Andor, I, I couldn't wait for the next one. But this one, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe because I've had a kid now. i got so much additional shit on my Before, I was like a young, younger, spontaneous, <laughs> spontaneous, you know, able to do anything. But even like, you know, the, the general feeling from the podcasting community and, you know, Steel was doing, you know, weekly round tables and everyone was just going hell for the Kessel run transmissions it just seems it's it's dropped off a bit yeah oh look it's but, it's definitely reflective of the quality i think um you know a book of boba fett was varying in quality this season's been but and all obviously been the shining light in between them but you know and to be honest like bad batch showed it up in a bad bad a big bad way the last half of the bad batch was excellent um, and the, their finale was fantastic <laughs> and there was real stakes and a real like where are we going and what's happening and stuff like that like they could really take a leaf out of out of that i think and you know they had twice as many maybe three times as many episodes to to deal with um but we'll see like i, I kind of just you know I, I saw all the discourse and stuff on and you know i think it's fair enough if you wanted to criticize something and if you loved it you loved it that's great like good on you like it's only star wars but i don't think we need to just settle for pretty good i think there's no shame in saying hey we want this to be really good because we know it can be really good and when star wars is really good it just like it's really it good. gets us fans all going and excited and we want to like talk about it and and we want more and we're hungry um this kind of felt like a mercy killing where it was like oh great well they've, they've wrapped this up hopefully they can get their crap together for next season it really just like let's just get through this so they can it's like a bad football season it's like they've finished it feels like they've just finished outside the eight. That feels Play like they played drive. finals. They, they finished. They yeah, they finished. Well, they finished. They played finals last year. They didn't win it last year. They played finals. They finished fifth or fourth or fifth on the ladder. Um, but they had a good end of the season. 
And then the expectation was pretty high. And then they've kind of just dropped the ball. It's kind of like Essendon's season last year. It was not a disaster like that, but... Last year? You mean every year? Well, um, Essendon played finals 20, the year before last. And then la- the, last year, the expectation was high and they completely bottled it and finished bottom four. And then this year, they've started really strongly. You can turn it around in a year, not to say that the season's over. But it does feel like you just they were just waiting to, to get to the draft. To basically, like, let's just get out of here and let's rebuild over the summer. And I think that's what they've got to do. Excuse all the footballing metaphors, but uh, I think a summer. So I think Filoni, a hard, a Filoni hard has tanked for draft picks. I, I just He's think they, have, they, they need to have a hard preseason. They need to get on the track in December. They need to be, you know, not drinking over the break. They need. To, <laughs> they really need to be putting the time in. They need to have the right people there. Maybe there does need to be a shake up at, at board level. I think maybe there does need to be a shake up at the uh, on the coaching panel and um, and turn it around. So excuse the f- sport mm. metaphors, but I feel it, it does feel like that. And you can turn it around in a season and you can get back on top. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Sal- sal- salary cap's an issue. Had to pick up Gina Carano as a free agent. Yeah, right. Well, you know, and we didn't even see Pedro, Pedro Pascal's face this season. And I, I mean, we'll go into, I think when we do the full recap, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But um, let's wrap this up, mate. Thanks for taking the time to do this. What's going on My with pleasure, uh, three men and a baby Yoda? Are you, are you back back soon? What's going on? Yeah, I, I think this season, you know, we said, oh, we'll be back every week, but we, I don't know, Callum keeps going away and stuff. We, we, we'll be back on Sunday to wrap up the wrap up the year. We, our last one was a halftime pep talk with, with Frosty. Mm-hmm. So uh, the pep talk didn't happen. The, the, the season continued as in the in the motion it was going, but <laughs> look, it was... It, well, it didn't quite insp- gave, gave you a bit of a spray, but ultimately the message was lost. It was lost, but uh, look, I'm not unhappy. I enjoyed it. It was um, it was good. It just wasn't great. Yeah, but we, and like you said, we, we just demand you know, greatness. We want, we, 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 want, just, we, want we should great. have great. We should strive for it. Doesn't matter if you don't get there, but there's no no shame in wanting greatness. Mm. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, the Andor finale was just absolutely sensational, and I, I you know, the, the story hit hit me like a ton of bricks the, you know the funerals so everything was just insane and you know I, I was thinking about that for for weeks afterwards like whereas this one you know i went to bed last night and haven't, i haven't even given a second thought today until <laughs> well now. i can hear me trying to remember so, what had happened i don't know whether it was the jet lag and stuff but uh anyway um we'll come back we'll get the, we'll bring dale and Catherine on and um and yourself in a week or two and we'll recap the whole season we'll, we'll go back and have a proper look at it but uh Thanks so much, mate. My pleasure, mate. Good to see you. And uh, catch you soon. See you soon. Bye.